Aujourd'hui, uh, je vais parler de, well, the death of Mint, uh, really, because this was the OG of personal finance free tracking apps, and it's about to go, go, go to the other side of death, life, right there. So let's talk about what happens now. Hey, Zenpak here. Can't start off the new year without good news, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, I mean, if you're one of those tech-savvy people, uh, you already know this, right? The original personal finance app Mint, or Mint.com, whatever you want to call it, is definitely going away. So is that really sad or bad news? Uh, and what happens now? Then that's what I will get into. But first, a wee bit of history, right? Good God, this app's been around for a long time. Since 2006, okay, it is a unique combination of tracking net worth and budgeting. Well, to an extent at least. And it came roaring out of the gates as a startup darling for a bit and then got bought by a giant corporate parent that is into it since 2009. So yeah, it's been like more than a decade since uh, Mint has had real resources behind it. I think that's partly why people in the personal finance space as a whole was taken a bit uh, aback, right, by the news that Mint is going to shut down entirely. Well, it's really officially being called, uh, not so much as shutting down as its features are being rolled into into its other personal finance product, which is uh, Credit Karma, okay? I feel like I've literally been using the service for as long as it has existed, uh, but I could be mistaken, right? Let's just call it that I've been using it for so long that I can barely remember when I didn't have it, so at least a decade, okay? So yes, a long time or also known as long enough to want to reminisce about it, uh, its impending demise. But more importantly, revel in what comes afterward. After all, it is a new year, right? A time of reflection and rebirth. So here we are. Anyway, if you're intrigued by what I might say, please subscribe, like, comment, share, and all those social media buzzwords, or whatever, okay? Because I am rich enough for me, and I'll be great regardless. Ah, now my point number one. Was the death of Mint inevitable? I mean, the writing's been on the wall for a while. I mean, I think I recall a time when Mint was a startup, right? And a few le uh, years later, it got bought by the beast that is into it. And what has happened exactly since that acquisition? What new feature has, e you know, real corporate resources put behind it? I would argue uh, mostly a giant bucket load of bupkis, okay? Like a few more charts or whatever, but fundamentally the product has stagnated for the entire duration of Intuit's ownership. I mean, that company paid $170 million for Mint and all of its customers, obviously, and then it proceeded to do with it what? I mean, since they're shutting Mint down, uh, we can, uh, well, at least by the end of Q1 of 2024, that must imply they weren't making money on it. And yet, why sh should they make money on it? If the product has been the same for 15 to 18 years, this is a tech product we're talking about, right? Not Coca-Cola, right? What the heck is Intuit thinking? That everything will just stay the same in the tech space for almost two decades, then they won't bleed customers in that time period? Seriously, what kind of morons run into it, right? That is all I can try to speculate, because clearly whoever runs it did not and definitely does not actually care about what Mint is uh, as a personal finance tool whatsoever. So, what are the alternatives for a post-mint world? Well, according to the internet, or Reddit, more, probably more specifically, this is where I'm getting my info, there are quite a few alternatives, right? Uh, but which fits better depending, uh, depends on what, whether you're willing to pay, depends on what uh, features matter to you more, the budgeting side or the net worth tracking side of things. And to throw a further wrench into the equation on whether those alternatives uh, pick up all the aggregation of accounts that Mint had available, right? So I'm going to ignore that last bit because I'm based in the U.S., so I can't really speak to how much alternative solutions can help non-U.S. you know people. Uh, but I will list some alternatives based on the other two criteria, right? So if you're willing to play, uh, pay, apparently Simplify and Monarch uh, are, are the way to go. If you need, uh, uh, you know, budgeting. Amongst the best of the choices, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I believe it's uh, you need a budget will, uh, will be the best. Now, uh, if you're unwilling to pay rocket money for more budget-friendly uh, people in terms of uh, budgeting, uh, 
but Nerd Wallet and Empower, formerly Personal Capital, seems to be the choices du jour uh, for the network tracking side, right? Now, since Mint itself was mostly free, I'm gonna lean towards more on the free side. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't pay around, say, 100 bucks a year to better manage your personal finances, but isn't that a bit of uh, antithetical to tracking finances since one's really rich, uh, you know, because we're, we usually do this before we are considered rich, right? Now, uh, uh, some people just record net worth or budgeting really on a spreadsheet alone, and that's always definitely free, right? Now, tension aside, on the free side of things, Rocket Money actually sounds kind of interesting because it helps you remove recurring uh, cost. That's their whole thing. A nerd wallet, well, I do like their website. Uh, apparently, it's, it's it's just a little surprising to learn that their app is more geared towards uh, not so much financial journalism, but towards being a macro personal finance view similar to Mint instead. So, you know, maybe you've got, if you guys try that one, you can let me know how you feel. Okay. But most importantly, my final always third point, what am I picking as a Mint alternative, um, you know, once Mint finally dies, right? Clearly, that's what you're wondering about. Now, my pick is pretty boring, okay? I have been with Personal Capital for years since it was still called Personal Capital. Now it's called Empower. I'm gonna continue to use it. Uh, this is because its platform is more about net worth tracking and asset allocations than budgeting, and that's exactly what I want, right? I only care about net worth tracking and Empower does a fine job of it. All its features, uh, you know, geared towards giving me a bird's eye view as to what type of equities that I have. Cool, I like that as an extra, so helps me understand if I need to rebalance, okay? Now, uh, it lacks budgeting features. So what? I didn't really use Mint for that anyway. I literally use Fudget, which is a different app that's not in, I wouldn't call it a Mint alternative at all, but it is used for uh, expense tracking, not even budgeting, okay? I don't call it that because I don't budget. All I do is uh, you, uh, make sure that I know what I'm actually spending my money on, but I don't put a cap on it, okay? Uh, so, for net worth tracking, Empower works fine. I will mention one common complaint about Empower, which is that apparently they want to upsell you on their managed accounts, you know, with people. This is a non-issue for me specifically because I actually tried them uh, when they were personal capital with managed portfolio for one whole year, and frankly, they did not impress, so I stopped that after, I think, a year. Since then, I've never gotten any upselling calls from them, okay? so. That's a way to counter that complaint, okay? Just pick up the phone, uh, or you can just not pick up the phone when a stranger is calling. I mean, it is 2024, who still picks up the phone when anyone calls that's not, you know, someone you already know, right? <laughs> so, in conclusion, well, I miss Mint when it's gone. Uh, sure, as much as I miss one of those giant clunky TVs uh, that we all used to have more than 20 years ago. I mean, I, I would miss it for nostalgic reasons, uh, but for rea ra realistic, practical, feature-based reasons, not really, okay? Mint has not been the best or the only option of what they do for at least 10, 10 years now. I get it, we all hate losing history, at least in terms of net worth tracking, but it's also easy enough, uh, at least right, right now when Mint's still alive, to just keep a personal spreadsheet and keep some snapshot in, uh, info in time that only you can access. Now, that is what actually what I do, by the way. After all, after all, that's the reality of personal finance, right? It is deeply personal. We don't really need to share that with everybody on the internet, right? Just uh, knowing our own journey should be enough, right? How about you guys? Let me know in the comments below. Cheers. I'll approach it.